Welcome back. So now that I've completed the rolling chassis, I can focus all my attention on the engine. To give a quick recap, the clocks on the bike show about 21,000 miles, but when giving the engine a look over, there were signs that this may not be the original engine. So pair that with a complete lack of history. I've opted to open it up and inspect it all. So far I've stripped the top end, cleaned and inspected the pistons and cylinders, and so far everything's looking good. So now I'm moving on to the cylinder head. The first task is stripping it down and cleaning everything ready for a full inspection. Before I start taking it apart, I need a way to avoid mixing up the parts as it's important they go back in the right place. I looked online for a 2x8 container to match the layout of the head, but I couldn't find anything. In that situation, what can you do but make your own? An evening with some foam board and a glue gun and I had exactly what I wanted. I used a magnet to remove the buckets and shims, putting them in their respective trays. Three of the spark plug holes had the O-rings on them, but one was missing, so I went looking for it. It wasn't on the cam cap side, but looking in the spark plug hole, I found it. I removed the rest of them and put the head on its side to fit the spark plugs. I needed them back in so I could perform a test of the sealing surfaces between the valve seats and the valve faces. With the combustion chambers upwards, I had a check over the surface. This will definitely need a good clean. There was loads of gasket material that will need cleaning out. I made a pool of water in the combustion chamber with enough to cover all four valves and fired compressed air into the exhaust ports. I'm looking for bubbles that signify a leak between the valve and the head, but the exhaust side seemed fine. I did the same on the inlet side, and this time I had some bubbles coming through. So I'll definitely be paying attention to the surfaces and lapping in the valves on reassembly. Moving to the second chamber, one of the exhaust valves was good, the other had some bubbles, but the inlet valves were both good. I carried on through the rest of the chambers and it seemed to be a similar story did a compression test before stripping the bike and had good compression, so I'm not really chasing an issue here, but it's good to know that a quick cleanup and valve lap will be beneficial. I picked up this valve spring compressor off Amazon, as it was a fair price and it had good reviews. I found the fitting that was the right size, hung the head over the bench slightly and fit the compressor on the first valve. I spanned the handle to compress the spring, just enough to reveal the collets at the top of the valve stem. Then using the magnetic end of a screwdriver, I removed them carefully. I released the tension on the spring, and then I removed the spring seat, the outer spring, and then the inner spring. I popped the valve stem down to release the valve and retrieved it from underneath. I gave it a little look over and put all the parts into their compartment in the organizer. Then I got to work on the rest.
With the last bits removed, I marvelled at my organisational prowess. And I didn't see anything worrying amongst the parts. Looking over the head, there's still a few bits left to remove. I started with the valve stem seals, as I'll be replacing these on reassembly. My needle nose pliers and a steady hand made short work of these. Next were the air tubes and oil feed tubes. One feeds oil up into the galleries in the cam cap assembly to keep the camshafts lubricated. The other four are part of the clean air system, designed to navigate the stringent emissions test in some markets. It works by adding filtered air into the exhaust port through these small holes. These reed valves in the cylinder head cover stop exhaust gases coming back up the system during the exhaust stroke. Clever stuff, but I'm pretty sure I'll be removing and blocking off this whole system on reassembly. Next to remove from the head were the lower spring seats. I struggled to get them out with a magnet as the valve guides were in the way and the surface tension of the leftover oil held them quite firmly. So I held a small magnet in my pliers to get down the sides and I lifted them out. A little bit fiddly, but it worked. I wanted to replace the exhaust studs too. They showed their age, so I hit them with a torch and I tried my 8mm stud extractor. For some reason though, it just wasn't biting, so I reverted to the two nuts technique where you tighten two nuts against each other and undo the stud with those, which span them out without any issues. I think I'm gonna send the head off to get vapor blasted at a local shop. So before I do, I decided to remove the vacuum takeoffs and blank the holes with screws. With the head now fully stripped, I took it over to Steve at Ultra Blast in Waterlooville. Then I made a start running everything through the parts washer. I spent a bit of time researching valve cleaning techniques. And my main learning was that you want to start with the most gentle abrasive as you can and then work your way up. That way you don't risk damaging the mating surface. This is an inlet valve after a scrub with a nylon brush. It cleared the grime, but it will need something tougher for the carbon deposits. I carried on through the rest and moved on to the exhaust valves. Naturally, these had more carbon on, so I made a holder out of a piece of cardboard so I could see what the ultrasonic tank filled with a solvent solution would do, as this had had a good effect on the pistons. After 20 minutes, it had taken some off, but the solution was probably too weak to break down the carbon. So I did a little test. The left one is neat brake cleaner, and the right one is a specific valve and carburetor cleaner, the type you normally put directly into the fuel tank. After an hour, I gave them both a scrub with green Scotch Bright and assessed them. There wasn't a lot in it, but it seemed like the dedicated cleaning stuff did a slightly better job at breaking down the carbon. So I laid them all out and left them to soak for a few hours. Then I gave them a scrub up with the scotch brake and a wipe down with the rag. They came out pretty well. I don't really feel like you need to make them like new, but just clean enough to inspect the sealing surfaces and remove the built up carbon. I looked across the faces of each valve and I was happy not to see any real pitting or damage, but I will be doing a proper test to see the true state of the contact patch. I got the call from Ultra Blast, so I went to pick up the head and who's a pretty boy? How can this be the same head? That's amazing, I love it, I'm so happy. So that's the whole head stripped, clean, blasted and ready for closer inspection. In the next video, I'll be measuring everything, replacing anything that needs it and putting it all back together. If you do enjoy watching these videos and you want to support me making them, you can become a channel member. Either click the join button on my homepage or click the link at the end of the video. Anyway, I better get measuring, I'll see you soon. I got the call from Ultra Blast, so I went to pick up the head and Oh!